Behind me here is the very latest Saxdor 400 GTC. And I'm gonna show you a full tour around and exactly what makes it different from the GTO right here. Now we've got them both next door to each other so we can get a full tour of both and explain exactly what the differences are. Let's start here with the GTC. Now this is the fully enclosed version. So it has solid glass doors all the way along the sides and at the back. Now prices for this start from £324,000 including VAT. So that is including VAT but the base price. Now here we go, we can take a look at both of them next door to each other. They are pretty much identical boats in terms of spec. They both have the twin 400 horsepower V10 Mercury outboards. That will give a top speed of around about 45 knots in the slightly heavier GTC and probably about 49 knots in the GTO. Now, what you can see here is that we've got all the canopies up. So this is the open version of the boat, effectively. It does have canopies. They live inside these sea pillars here. Just pull the curtains out and then you can have effectively an enclosed boat but using plastic canopies. So very, very open boat and you've got the full benefit of these lovely open folding platforms and that seat faces outwards. This is the new boat, the GTC, and this is a much more secure, enclosed pilot house style boat, albeit still with a great deal of convertibility. You'll see that a lot of it opens up as well. We've got exactly the same folding platforms as one of those on each side. So they both fold down and create a lot of extra open deck space. And of course, these lovely full height doors. But this is the main difference. We have got solid glass sliding doors. So I'll show you it both in completely open mode like this and with it all closed up. But it's effectively that door slides across, that big window closes up, that door slides shut, and then you've got a completely enclosed pilot house. Now then, let's start at the back. Here we've got this lovely glass transom we've seen before. Just makes such a difference. It's being able to view all the way out through here rather than having a big chunky fiberglass molding. There are those twin engines, beautiful stainless steel. On this side, if we pop this open. Oh, it already was open. There you go. We can see there is a wet bar here. We've got the grill fitted. We've got a sink. There's no fridge on this one, but there will be a bin under here. On the other side, it is a big draining storage area. Oh, haven't quite got it open, there we go. You can see just a big draining locker so you can put your fenders or wetsuits or anything else in there that you want to dry out. You'll notice there's also a diesel filler there. That is for the heating system because this is obviously a petrol powered boat. Now, much like the GTO, this sunbed slides out. In fact, I'll demonstrate that quickly here. You can see we've got a pair of buttons down here. One is the sliding one. So if I pull the whole bed backwards like that, then the other one is for the headrest. Click it open and then that folds down and then you've got a lovely full length sunbed. So the reason it does that, you can still walk around anyway, but of course if you push it up then you have a little bit more clearance around it in the cockpit. Into the saloon itself, really good sociable seating all around both sides. Here are those big sliding doors. You can see there's one on each side. That just pulls down, slides across. It has a secondary latch just to stop, make sure you don't trap anybody's fingers by sliding it across in one go. Push it again, and there you go. And now, absolutely secure. That's all electrically powered. I will show you how that closes up too. Swing gate there. That just closes manually. And that bifold door there. That again, closes manually and locks into place. You just see there's a little latch up there. Pull it down, that locks it into place. Pull it up and then it swings across. So very simple to do, but nice and secure. Once you have closed that door handle, that just locks into place. Now you may remember there's some really clever seating ideas going on here. So at the moment we've got it in the sociable mode. We've got a table that folds out. If 
I pull that there, pull that across, then we've got a lovely big table. You've also got a folding section this side, and that's just to make it easier to move around. So if you want to be able to move through the boat, you can fold that up and still move around. But I'm going to put it over this way because there is something pretty unique about this seat here. If I close that up, there is a button here. If I press that lock, you first of all, just see that the table goes up and down. So that's just convenient for raising it or lowering it. And then if I do that and press the seat button here, you'll see that the seat itself lifts up and over. Just takes a little bit of time to lock into place. Look at the size of those hinges down there. That moves there. Then it's just a question of lifting this backrest up from here, or actually might be easier to do from this side. Lift it up, swing it over, push it into place. And then you've got a forward facing seat. So you've got three rows of forward facing seats. You've got the helm seats here, you've got the second row here and a third row here. And when you're traveling at speed, that is just a much more comfortable way to travel than facing backwards. Another very clever thing going on here, if I move these cushions and that one there, just pop that on that table for a moment. If I pull this seat out, there we go, lift it up. Oh, there's a button here. Need to press that little button down there. That unlocks it. This lifts up. And you can see this is access to the aft cabin. This section here also lifts up like so. Then you drop down into the aft cabin and a surprisingly decent size bed in there. We've got eye level glass all the way around, a couple of opening hatches, make sure it feels nice and ventilated. Sure, it's not the biggest cabin in the world, but nevertheless, it does mean you've got a second overnighting facility on board as well as the main cabin forward. But a really clever way of getting to that without compromising the saloon itself. So just show you that in reverse, that goes down, puts into place there. This swings back down, locks into place, shove that cushion back in, pick up that backrest, pop it back into place. Obviously that poppers in when I'm being a bit more careful, but really good seating there. Now another sliding door over on this side, exactly the same. Open it up. There we go. We've got the balcony up on this side, but you can see you still get the benefit of a nice open door. And of course, when the balcony's folded down, you then have another access direct to the sea. Lovely little corner seat here. The only thing it won't do is face out over the sea. In the GTO version, the backrest moves so you can have a seat facing out. Obviously not gonna work on this boat with these solid doors. Big wet bar on this side. Got a Wallace diesel hob here. So that's why you had the diesel filler back there as well as the heating, you can also run the cooker. Just means you don't have to be plugged into shore power if you want to make yourself a cup of tea. Decent little sink there, fridge down there. Just close that down, put that hatch back in place just to show you what it looks like when it's not in use. It's a very neat integrated look. Lovely big opening sunroof overhead, so lots of ventilation and natural light pouring in through there, as well as through those big doors. Really good helm position. We've got a two-man bench and a one-man bench. So you've got twin seats there. Both have got lifting bolsters, so you can sit or lean. They slide backwards and forwards, so they're adjustable. We've got a footrest here and a really good driving position. Look at that. Plenty of views through here, relatively narrow window or windscreen pillar. Got a bit of flare from the windscreen here, but out on the open water, you get cracking good views all the way around. Really good visibility. Triple Simrad screens on this one. I imagine it's an option. We've even got a fourth down here. So full control, 
throttles nicely on a little plinth coming towards you so really well positioned next to the wheel but a bit closer to you so you don't have to reach for them you have actually got a uh, control for the Simrad screens there so if you don't want to lean forward to use the touch screens you have got remote control there and you've also got a joystick for those twin outboards so you really can berth it very simply just using that joystick. A couple of cup holders, bow thruster and then proper old school analog switches for all the key information so you don't have to search through menus to find the right things. You've got the windows up and down We've got anchors up and down. We've got all the lighting, roof lights, anchor light, nav lights, horn, etc. A bit odd to have the horn way over there, to be honest. I think that's the one thing you want right in front of you if you do need to let somebody know that you're coming. It would be easier to have that a little bit closer. Now, as with all these Saxdor GTCs, we've got a full width pilot house. So it goes all the way out. We haven't got walk around decks. You move through the saloon to access the foredeck has a simple manual gas strut supported window literally just pull that open push it down and once it gets to a certain position it locks into place there is a gate here that swings too so completely secure but very easy to walk up into this bow area and a lovely sociable bow area here too you've got a nice little square table again that all folds up so easy movement around it, seating around three sides of it, inset grab rails everywhere you go, and easy access to the anchor locker. Just see if I can reach over and open that up. You can see that is a swing out anchor system. So that whole hinge bracket through hull anchor swings out, make sure that it drops clear of that vertical bow section. Electric windlass operated from inside so you can do it all from the safety of the helm. Move back through the boat, noticing we've got a big skylight there and that's because when you drop down into the cabin, now we've got alternating steps so you have to go left first, lead with the left, then the right, just means you don't have to have such long deep steps and lose a whole load of space to the actual stairwell down. This is the main cabin, we've got a double bed running under that bow area seating headroom at this end plenty of clearance here obviously it does get a bit tighter up there but that's only going to be your feet tucked down there so not really going to be a problem lots of good lighting up above through those skylights so storage in there there we go opening locker hanging space on this side we've got the access to the music system Basto heating, reading lights under here, little storage panels. This looks like the breaker panel, there we go. Access to all the breaker switches there. And a little storage unit under here. Oh, there we go, literally just lift it up, swings into place, and then there's a really good storage unit there. You could fit quite a lot in there, if whether it's just bags, you might even be able to fit a inflatable SUP or something in there if you wanted to. Obviously once it's deflated, but really clever way of just accessing a bit more storage space. And then of course, a separate heads compartment. You need to be this side of it in order to get in, but swing that open. And then there's a decent heads compartment in here. We've got the loo down there. There is a shower on this side, so it is a proper wet room, bit of storage space. No natural light in here, but you have got decent artificial lighting and access to the back of the helm through there. So let's move back out, take one final look. Now, just for comparison's sake, you've seen what it's like with the doors open and the doors closed. Full weather protection if you want it. Just very quickly, let's have a look at this GTO again. So here you can see it does just feel that bit more open. You've still got the clear, transparent plastic windows if you want to. Obviously not gonna be quite as secure, but you get a bit more of an open cockpit. Otherwise, exactly the same. This is the key difference, is that the uh, seats 
on is it oh okay so that seat there i think it's that one so if i pull that lever there like that that then folds down and it just means you've got a seat facing out over this platform here otherwise pretty much identical you pays your money you takes your choice i think probably in the uk the gtc the added flexibility and weather protection you get from that is going to be the way forward i hope you enjoyed having a quick look at both these two Saxtor 400s. As always, do please let me know what you make of them both and which one you'd go for. My name is Hugo Andre. You've been watching Motorboat and Yachting. I'll see you on the next one.